The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Here we are again, hungover, missing our clothes, missing our memories, but the one thing we do still recall is Disco Elysium is a brilliant, singular RPG, and so it once again takes the top spot in our top 100 games list. There's still nothing like it, though I suspect we'll start seeing imitators soon, and who wouldn't want to imitate this? A detective yarn that rewrites the rules of RPGs, which eschews combat even if you do have a gun, and instead keeps all of its drama and tension in its incredible text. Everywhere it plays with expectations, turning simple skill checks into elaborate internal monologues where the voices in your head paint a vivid picture of the detective you're becoming. And if you fail them, you could die, the victim of a deadly ceiling fan, a heart attack, or depression. One moment you're running like the wind, then you've suddenly turned around and are giving him the finger, furiously, with both hands. Why? There are laughs in abundance, but even more moments of bleak, existential dread. And since launch, this exceptional RPG has only grown more powerful and evocative, with an even deeper exploration of the complex politics that make up the city of Revachol, elevated by the addition of full voice acting. No. You have sustained a trauma to your lower neck. It's a real treat and a great excuse to put on your hideous necktie and become a detective once again. I've returned to Revachol since Disco Elysium topped the top 100 last year, and I have to say I'm altogether smitten once again. Exceptional voice acting only makes this game that much more inviting for a replay. Plus, I've lost all impulse to play the good guy, and instead I'm leaning fully into a communist brute that intends to smash his way to the culprit, or twist his own thought process until it doesn't matter who he points the finger at. So long as they're against the people, they're guilty of something. That's probably why I find myself gravitating back towards Disco Elysium on a regular basis. You become some version of this down and out cop twisted by your own decisions as a player, and often bleak ones that continue to haunt you until the credits roll. It's truly an RPG for RPG heads too, and as much as I'm excited to play it, and whatever Zarum thinks up next, I'm also pumped to see who it inspires next. In most RPGs, I'm always fretting about making the right choice in any given situation, whether that's to get the best ending or save a particular character, but I never thought about doing that in Disco Elysium. One of the things that Disco does so brilliantly is make bad dice rolls fun. Like when you're such a bad cop that you puke while trying to investigate a body, or when you injure yourself by trying to lift a barbell off the ground to show off for some reason. In conversations, you can choose to listen to one of your inner voices and just blurt out something dramatic or threatening or drug frenzied in the middle of a conversation. And most of the time, that doesn't fit into that usual RPG flowchart of finding the right dialogue decision to progress. It's a lot more naturalistic than that. So characters will just react to you being a total weirdo. Disco really embraces you putting your foot in your mouth at every turn, and then it makes the joke even better when one of your inner voices gives you shit for doing something stupid. Kill him. Kill him now. He won't see death coming. <laughs> 